Hey, everybody. Hope you had a great holiday season. We're back at it in January. Today, we're going to talk about something that's been a part of Logic for a long time now, ever since Space Designer was really put in. But it's something that you probably don't know much about, and I didn't know much about until this week when I was really trying to use it. And that is the fact that Space Designer can use ambisonic B format impulses to create surround reverbs. Now, it's not full 360 because, as we'll see in a few minutes, you can't use the vertical part of the Ambisonics B format source file. But you can use the other three parts, the X, the Y, well, the W, the X, and the Y. It's just the Z we can't use. So I'm using this Zoom recorder right here. It's pretty new this past year, right at the end of the year. Super awesome. It's small. It's compact. Pretty low noise. And it's super easy to be able to create impulse responses using this. But I wanted to take the output file and use it inside Space Designer, which I'd seen in the manual, accepted B format sources. It also does 5.1 sources, which at the very least, we could convert the H3VR's recording into surround using the H3VR's accompanying software. But I wanted to actually do the B format thing. Now, we're not getting too much into actually what all of this means. I think we're going to do a video this year at some point, which really explains Amazonics. But it's creating that or using minimal source recordings to create a 360 representation of a room. Okay, so I have my file. This is it right here. This is one of the output ones. And because it's not trimmed automatically, I am going to bring it into Logic here so I can trim it down. Now, this one right here is the Z file, the, the Z axis. And so that's the one we're not going to be able to use, but I'm going to leave them all together for the moment. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. We want to zoom in so we can edit this pretty close to that start point. And we can do this. Let's change our command tool here to be scissors. We'll do it like that. We'll get rid of those. And we'll zoom back out for a minute. The ending I'm a little bit less worried about because inside Space Designer, we're actually going to be changing that. But you can see here, the tail seems to die down right there, but it keeps on going to a, for a little while. Right about here, we're guaranteed, or we're pretty close to being done with that. So we'll leave that tail like that. So here are the four files that we have for this. These are the different microphone feeds that come off the Zoom recorder, which help create that full 360. Now, what I want to do right off the bat is export these because... We're going to actually be pulling these in to our file. So let's find out where we are here. We have an unsaved folder I can see. Let's go to the desktop, create a new folder, and we'll save the four files for this just so I can find it in a second here. We're going to make these AFE. Everything else will be fine. Don't need to add them. Hit save. So now, Let's go back out to our finder for a moment, just confirm all of this. Here are the four files still in order from how we exported them here. So that's exactly what we wanted so far. Coming back into Logic, what we want to do now is open up the impulse response utility. This is the key to doing this, to making this work. And what we want to do is create a new project and we want to do mono to B format. So this is the main one we're going to be working in. You can see right here, we have the three channels, W, X, and Y. So this again shows us right off the bat that they're not using the Z part of the B format, which is fine, but it's a little bit obnoxious. What we want to do, though, right off the bat is come in here. We're just going to drag. We're going to end up with two projects. We're going to drag this one out. 
And right off the bat, we're going to do mono to B format. And we don't need to change anything here. W, X, and Y. But we do need to know what format the actual recorder records them in. Because there's going to be this moment where we need to move them in. Here are the four files we made. And so we need to know which X, which one's X, which one's Y, which one's W, and then how to delete Z. So in this case, once you have that figured out for your recorder that you're using, then that'll be really important. What we're going to do, though, before we get on to that, is we're going to save this right here. And I'm just going to, again, call this descriptive right now, ready for four files. Put this on the desktop. Now we have that saved. So we're going to close that for just a moment. So you can see down here, ready for four files. I'm going to show package contents for this. And there are the three files that we're using. And then we come out here with this one, and here they are. So W is the first with both of them. So we're going to call that one. And then this one is the one we're just going to leave how it is. And then X is down here, so we're going to call that two. And that's three. Now that I knew which order they were in because I looked at the manual of the Zoom recorder. It's not like I could just read their mind right there. I actually had to figure that out. So we're going to replace these three in the actual sound, the original project here for the impulse utility. So those three are now in there. Let's get out of this. And... Let's open this one back up. Now you're going to see when I click on these, they're here. So it's changed files. So I just changed the files just by moving them into the project. And that's kind of a lame way to have to do this, but because of the difference, the original file has the four. This one only uses three. You need to be able to assign them. That's fine. But once we're done with this, we can now create the setting, and we can call this, let's see, we'll just call this the B format IR test. It says it's created. Now we go back into, well, let's close this. Let's go back into logic. And now under our presets, right, well, it was there. Right here, B format IR test. Now we have this. You can see right here where it says volume, filter, the name of the preset. Over here it tells us the format of it. It says Omni B format, which is exactly what it should say now that we're using the B format file for this. Now the interesting thing about this is that we can't actually do too much with this if we're just in a stereo environment. And so if you want to be able to take this further, then you actually need to be able to use some other tool to be able to hear this in surround, either a full speaker surround sound or uh, one of the, sit the sets from Waves, like the NX headphone trackers, etc. And so that's a really a video for a different time. This one is just showing you how to get your ambisonic impulse response into Space Designer, even though we don't have the full 360, we do have everything except for the vertical aspect of that original source file. Okay, hope this was useful. This may be a little bit nerdy for some of you, but as you're going to see in some of the future videos we're going to work on with this, having access to this does some really cool things in terms of capturing spaces and impulse responses, and so it's just a great tool to be able to work with.